Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel where skincare is all about progression over perfection because perfection doesn't exist. Today we're gonna to be reacting to some more skincare TikToks. TikTok can be a bit of a cesspool of misinformation, bad ideas, but also some really interesting um, new product innovations. My friend Ashton has pulled together some videos for me to watch, so they won't all make the cut here if I don't have anything to say about them, if we've talked about them before. But ones I wanna talk about, I will include in into this cut. So let's Let's start off. Let's just get into it. Let's watch this one. Dolce and Cabana, Fendi and Latana, Karen, they be sharing all their money. Got me wearing fly. Girl, but I ain't asking. They say they love my. I just. Here's the thing, I just don't get the need for DIY skincare anymore. I do not get it. I think DIY skincare started because it was nice to have something affordable compared to what was out there. Something you can quickly rustle up in your kitchen, but also this idea that, you know, products that you have in your kitchen, natural products are probably better than what's on the market. We all know that's not the case. We all know that we pretty much do want preservatives in our skincare. We don't want our skincare to be food because we don't be putting mold on our face. We all know that there are a lot of really good, affordable, affordable skincare brands out there now. You can get exfoliating pads for about three pounds. And it's kind of gross just to have these lying around for no reason. And we also know that things like sugar, ground up coffee, um, salt, no, no, salt, salt's never used, um, ground up rice, for example, done at home, you know, made into chunks rather than a fine powder, probably isn't the best to be rubbing on your skin as well. Is there anything wrong with this particular concoction? Not really. The sugar may be like a little bit too harsh. I don't really think that sugar softens too much in oil. I'm not sure whether it might round out those edges. Olive oil probably also isn't the best oil to use in your face, especially if you're acne prone. It's also very difficult to wash off. It's a cooking oil. It's hard, it's, it's gonna be greasy. Jojoba oil is probably a better one to use. For example, argan oil even more so. And I also, if we're just gonna be nitpicky. I don't think the delivery method of putting these on a cotton pad is that great either. You may as well just pour a little bit into the palm of your hand, put the sugar in, then kind of gently rub over your face. It may be gentler to put it on with a cotton pad, but I also don't think you're gonna get as much of an exfoliation. I personally just wouldn't do this. I'd go out and buy some nice gentle exfoliating pads. They tend to be a mix of very gentle chemical exfoliant and a gentle physical exfoliating pad. And you get your money's worth too, because they come in like a pack of 60 rather than, I don't know, however much oil and sugar you have to use to make a couple of pads like this. And I wouldn't leave this hanging around. I just feel like DIY skincare nowadays, it's messy. It can get expensive if you're constantly having to mix ingredients together. They don't last as long as a nice, well-packaged, still cheap and affordable skincare product will last. Next one. Oh no. Okay, so uh, here's the thing with this is I love using this product for under my armpits. I personally am using it under my armpits because I got some dark skin from what I think was damaged from a, a natural deodorant that I used maybe three to four years ago. I got a, a burn, I got some really bad irritation and then it kind of faded away but left darker skin. So I use this once or twice a week on dry skin under my armpits and it really has helped kind of like even everything out. It's not about lightening the armpits, it's just about eating back out that damage. There's two things here. The, the woman in this video says that she's using this product to lighten her underarms, part of the reason I was using it, and other people use this to kind of act as a deodorant because for some reason, I'm not sure of the science behind it, glycolic acid kind of helps keep you not smelly. It's like about the bacteria, I don't know. What people forget is that this is an exfoliating acid and just because this is a part of your body rather than your face, you still shouldn't be using it more than once or twice a week on your underarms. I don't actually know 
how often this woman used the exfoliator under her armpits. It could have been her first time, I don't know, but that looked quite like quite a significant irritation. So people are just going like using it like a daily deodorant or using it as part of their daily showering routine when you really shouldn't be. Your skin under your armpits is slightly different. One, the sun never sees it. It's always tucked away, right? There's a lot going on under there. It get like a little bit damp. The skin can be a little bit more sensitive. So we've got to be careful with the skin under our armpits compared to say, you know, you wouldn't, I would use this daily on my knees, for example, my crusty knees. I'd like use it daily on that to help exfoliate with the dead skin. I would not do it for under my armpits. But but also people using this as part of like a showering routine, you need to fully dry your armpits before using this. I feel like a lot of people are using this on, on damp skin and damp skin can help kind of quickly help products penetrate the skin and you should never exfoliate on wet skin wherever it is on your body unless the product has been formulated to do so for example there are a lot of body shower scrubs that have AHAs BHAs in and it's meant to be on damp skin exfoliating toners for example they're not meant to be put on damp skin so I wouldn't do that it can really really irritate and damage your skin okay next one did you know if you mix baking soda with honey and apple cider vinegar Mix it until it's like a paste, and boom, you got the best homemade natural remedy for pimples. Just put some on your finger, apply it on the pimple, leave it on overnight, and it'll disappear. I admire his energy. I wish he didn't have so much energy, but I admire his energy. This guy, bless him comes up with some very interesting concoctions. It's very five minute crafts, 2010. We've kind of been through this and done this. Um, and he presents a lot of this as kind of fact and interesting by doing this a lot. So he's, what is it again? <sighs> Honey, baking soda, extremely irritating on the skin unless formulated in a skincare product. Can strip your skin of its natural kind of like oils, damage your skin barrier, lead to a lot of irritation, itchiness, um, redness, baking soda. Honey, fine, knock yourself out, put honey all over your face, eat it, whatever. Apple cider vinegar is what of like the kind of like clean beauty movement, natural beauty DIY is used as an exfoliant. A few things with apple cider vinegar, one, Again, not created to go on your skin. It can be very, very irritating. Again, stripping your skin, irritating your skin barrier, it can be extremely drying for your skin as well. It's not made to go on your face. I believe it's got AHA. Apple cider vinegar contains alpha hydroxy acid. Again, extremely acidic. If you're gonna use it, water it down, I guess, I don't know. But just because a natural product contains some kind of what is used as a skincare ingredient, like an AHA, doesn't mean it's actually gonna work in that way. But you know, the AHA in this apple cider vinegar could be next to nothing or it could be too high. Exfoliating toners are perfectly balanced to use on skin. And again, I don't think it's a money thing. Apple cider vinegar is fucking expensive. If you own apple cider vinegar with mother, you can go out and get an inky list exfoliant. And yes, apple cider vinegar has multiple uses, but I also think if you're on a budget, it's an ingredient you can cut out of your life. So I don't think, that, there's just certain things that don't make sense budget-wise to me, you know? Let's conclude, this is gonna dry out your skin, it's gonna irritate your skin, it's gonna strip your natural skin barrier, leading to further irritation, redness. This may dry out your spot, really dry it out and then you're going to be left with a dark spot and further irritation. I don't recommend this. I think it's such a, a weird thing to still be doing this day and age. Bizarre to me. Okay, next one. that a little bit of pressure and okay so okay i love these by the way not this brand the ice globes Fre fresh air i can't remember what they're called love them absolutely love them here's the mistake people make with these read the instructions carefully a lot of people keep these in the fridge or the freezer all the time all the time, you're not supposed to. So these actually contain, um, it's usually just clear, everyone's like, it's got antifreeze in it, it hasn't. It's usually just clear liquid, colored liquid, sorry, with like a little bit of alcohol in it to stop that liquid completely freezing over. You are supposed to keep these in the fridge 
just 10 minutes before you start using them on a client or on yourself. They're not to be stored or, you know, kind of like kept in a freezer or kept in a fridge. If you do, you are at risk of kind of like damaging that glass. I don't think it's like, um, tea fowl and it was like cool what's that stuff that you can like put from like hot to cold and not worry about you go from the freezer to the microwave so yeah you can you can make like a lot of i'm gonna have to find this video hang on oh she said this is my cousin not a real client help hence the messing around okay I mean, yeah, so this could be a case of them being left in the fridge freezer for too long consistently, or honestly, really cheaply, poorly made ones. You are seeing these exact kind of ones pop up on places like Amazon, AliExpress, Wish, all that kind of stuff, and you just cannot guarantee the quality of that glass. You can get um, metal ones, you can get metal ones. Brands like um, Sachu, who do like the metal rollers, all that kind of stuff, I feel like make for a much nicer kind of like stainless steel, cold experience. Freysia ice globes, amazing quality. Kira Moon do some really, really good quality mini ones as well, because you just don't want to risk... <laughs> Look at that shot, it's just going in her eye. You don't want to risk this kind of thing if you work on clients, you know? Okay, next one. I don't know what the fuck was going on then. That was just bizarre. I mean, I obviously think they were like pissing about with that. The egg, I think, was just for clickbait. The gold is just a gimmick and does absolutely nothing. Maybe might exfoliate if it's got some rough edges on it, but not nice for the skin. I don't know what that other mask was, the one that set hard, but that can be quite nice for things like excess oils. And then they cleanse right at the end, which after all that, you don't really want to cleanse. You want to reap all the benefits of all the masks and everything you just did. So cleansing should be your first step. But I would also want to cleanse my skin if it's just had an egg on it. You know, salmonella, stuff like that. I don't know what that was. I don't know what was going on there. Um, I, I guess no comment. Okay, next one. Apparently, if you mix cinnamon with Vaseline, it's an all-natural lip plumper because it increases circulation around the lips. Let's test it out. So mixing in cinnamon and Vaseline. I'll let you guys know if this is going to start burning. I'm adding more because I'm not feeling anything. Okay, it's starting to tingle, but just a little bit. It looks like I just ate chocolate. I left it on for a few minutes. Now let's remove. Honestly, I feel like this irritated my lips and I didn't notice a difference. Yeah, I mean, it's going to. This is this is essentially how lip plumpers work is by irritating lips, but with ingredients that are obviously formulated into a skincare product that is, I guess you can say not dangerous but essentially that's what lip plumpers do they irritate your skin with very similar ingredients so yeah lip plumpers will use things like um like ginger cinnamon menthol all things that are meant to cause an irritation and a little disturbance they're safe to use um but that's how it kind of does that to your lip but again all formulated to work with the skin in a skincare product versus rubbing vaseline or cayenne pepper or something for example on your on your mouth and just causing irritation so it's kind of how it works but maybe a bit too literal okay next one it looks like we have some skincare mistakes here are five skincare mistakes you should stop making in 2023. Number one, using a towel to dry your face. If you're not washing them every day, it's going to accumulate bacteria and germs that can lead to acne. As an alternative, you can either air dry or do what I like to do, which is go in directly with a toner and a cotton pad. Okay, I've seen this one, so I'm gonna go step by step. Well, tip, mistake by mistake. Yes, if you're finding that you're breaking out a lot, whatever, whatever, towels can harbor bacteria, don't use them. We know that. That, you know, we've done that. 
My favorite tip, she says, is to use like a cotton pad, go straight in with a toner. Again, another great way to use a toner. Toners aren't for like um, removing excess cleanser. That's not what she's saying. Because I remember in the comments, people were saying, you shouldn't use toners like that. She's just saying like the a best, a really good way to um, dry your face essentially is to go in with your toner stage. And it kind of like helps just kind of like hydrate everything. So yes, completely agree. Her next mistake is applying skincare in the wrong order. Yes, whilst there are rules, I guess like, um, well, guidance of how you should apply skincare in what order, thinnest to thickest. These aren't really proven by any kind of science. Again, you can use the wrong order to your advantage. Using active serums over a moisturizer kind of helps them deliver a lot slower, get your skin used to it. S toners, essence serum, interchangeable, really with whatever thickness, you can kind of like interchange throughout that. As long as cleansing is your first step and sunscreen is your final step, honestly, you're kind of free to play around in the middle. As long as you aren't using like exfoliating toners after a serum, for example, you know? You only apply sunscreen once a day, yes. Big mistake. Applying hyaluronic acid on dried skin. This is a mistake that is a mistake. Let's see what she says. Or you're applying your hyaluronic acid directly to dry skin. For hyaluronic acid to work properly, you want to apply it to damp skin. So you can either apply it right after applying your toner or essence when your skin is still damp, or you can mist beforehand, which is what I like to do. So hyaluronic acid doesn't actually work that way. Hyaluronic acid works perfectly fine applied to dry skin. Before I carry on, stop this video, please, if you haven't already, go and check out Lab Muffin Beauty Science. She is one of the only creators I trust with a non- biased view when it comes to skincare science. She's always updating her videos as well, reading new studies and making the science side of skincare really, really easy to understand and enjoy. So in a TikTok video, Michelle explains that you do not need to put hyaluronic acid on damp skin. It is not going to suck water out of your skin. And it's not going to suck water out of the environment either. So all this idea of like you shouldn't be applying hyaluronic acid if you live in a dry climate or, or whatever, none of, none of that's true or relevant. Basically, to cut a very long story short, maybe oversimplifying things from my end, hyaluronic acid can't suck that far. <laughs> like it can't, it doesn't have the vacuum power of like pulling in things and soaking up things. It's not that powerful. Michelle describes the molecules in hyaluronic acid as more of sticky tape than a magnet. So they grab onto water that makes contact with the product, with the molecules. So it's not sucking, it's not pulling. And finishes by explaining that most skincare products, their first ingredient is water or aqua. So there's already enough water in the product to work with the hyaluronic acid. I personally do like to apply some hyaluronic, hyaluronic acid serums to damp skin only because the product is usually a little bit sticky and I don't really like that. Um, and applying it onto damp skin, whether that's like a toner or an essence, kind of just allows the product to glide nicer and feels like it kind of penetrates more and it, it's for some reason less sticky, but you're not gonna ruin your skin, dry out your skin, not get the full benefits of a hyaluronic acid serum if you aren't applying it to damp skin. Okay, so this is again another common myth, which I feel like has been debunked quite a few times over. Always practice good hygiene when you're doing your skincare routine, like wash your hands, you know, like, however, however, products that come in jars with lids on, with scoops, whatever, they are made with a strong enough preservative system to have your fingers continuously dipping in and out of them. They'll have a very different preservative system to say like a product with a pump. The chemists and brands will take into consideration the fact that one, it's a jar type packaging. So fingers, tools, fingernails, whatever, are continuously gonna go in and out of this product. Two, where your product's being kept. So think about external kind of factors that get into the product, including water, maybe like you keep it in the bathroom. And this is why we love preservatives, because if you make some kind of weird DIY cream at home and put it in a jar, and then you're opening and closing, you're using your hands or a scoop, whatever, it's gonna get a load of bacteria. Whereas products in jars have a preservative system strong enough to withstand you dipping in and out. So don't worry about it. Okay, next one. We are legitimately popping our pimples. This is crazy new skincare. It has these in every kit. They're one-time use and sterile. And it also has patches. So what you do is remove your makeup and find a big sucker that's ready to go. I was a little scared that it would hurt, but I can confirm it doesn't, which we loved. And because we just opened it, it says to apply the patch. It's going to heal it and keep the fluids contained. The real test. We're going to sleep with it on overnight 
And you guys, my pimple was smaller, it was less red, it was healed. This completely works, it's so cool. I'll be honest, I don't know if that's good or bad. And I'll be honest again, I will pip, pick a spot, pop it, and then put one of these pimple patches on. And just because I know it heal okay underneath it, I don't know whether this is a good or a bad thing. I don't know. I actually have no idea. Let me know in the comments if you know if you've seen anyone stitch this or whatever, but I actually, I don't know if this is beneficial. I want to try it. I want to try it. Okay, let's finish on this one. Bestie, run. Don't walk and get this product that made my skin go from this. To this in just two weeks of using. Link in my bio. The Iliune cream, I believe it's just a ceramide cream. Let me have a look. Iliune ceramide atto concentrate. I feel like they have that somewhere. I'll have to check, but I'm pretty sure I own that. Yeah, I mean, it looks nice. It's just it's just like a ceramide cream, right? So it's similar to Astura, similar to CeraVe. Um, I mean, I wouldn't go running to grab it, but apparently it's a nice cream. I've seen some really, really good reviews about it. This for me is kind of like, um, Typical TikTok, like her skin really wasn't that bad in the first place. She had a few dry patches. Um, and then she had like a nice filtered skin after. <laughs> it's, just, it's just like, it's a typical TikTok like, oh, you know, you have to get this product, you have to. It's obviously worked for her, it's a lovely cream. I don't really have much to say about that other than um, it's a ceramide cream. Like, let's not get too excited, but it's obviously worked for her and that's great. But let me know what you think about these TikToks in the comments down below. You can watch some more TikTok React videos here. So in general, light entertainment here and I'll see you over there.